Sure. So just some examples of some of the things that we've been doing during this economic downturn that it will also help us, I think, when we come out the other side to continue to innovate and deliver good service. Uh, one, I'm sure many people in this community saw the announcements about passport services. It, becoming a passport acceptance location is not only about revenue, but it's bringing in revenue, but it's also about customer service, providing something that people really welcome, and also aligning with travel information and e-government services, which will certainly be the cornerstone of the future. It's the expansion and of our career services and our technology training and moving that out and throughout the county. It's also using text messaging for more information sharing and expanding that. Um, it's the uh, building on the summer camp program with, that we have so that learning continues throughout the summer at the libraries. And the last item that I'll mention and one that we're very excited about is the construction of a new branch in Warrensville Heights. We're building a new branch on Northfield Road in Warrensville Heights. We're building on the same property with the YMCA. So we're aligning with the Y. We're looking at how we work together to really make a change in that community. And then the bigger piece is how this project is part of an economic development project for the city of Warrensville Heights and also the creation of a civic center for that city. And that, I think, is part of a, a sea change for Cuyahoga County Public Library and a place for libraries to be. Um, we'll have an overall capital program, and it will be about that sea change as we move forward. Thank you. Our next speaker is our only non-librarian to speak here, and in some ways that's very exciting. So I'd like to introduce Ms. Susan Benton. Susan is the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Urban Libraries Council, a membership organization comprised of over 180 libraries that serve populations in excess of 100,000 residents. Ms. Benton brings over 20 years of executive experience in national and local government associations to her post at the ULC. Before you leading ULC, she held a position of Research, Development, and Strategic Partners Executive at the ICMA. Susan holds a BA in Psychology and Sociology from Indiana University of Pennsylvania and an MBA from American University. Please welcome Ms. Susan Mitten. All right, so I'm the interloper. Um, <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is quite a lineup that I'm with today. Um, and it's really humbling for me to be with this lineup of librarians. But um, I want to say that you're quite a lineup too. Um, and the work that you do is amazing to me. I've worked with cities and counties all of my life. I made that decision because I think public sector and public servants are so important to our communities and to our country. And that I've had the opportunity to, over the last three years, get to know in a deeper way what's going on in libraries has been one of the most profoundly uh, beneficial things to me personally and certainly to me professionally. So thank you for doing everything that you do every day. You make a difference in so many people's lives at so many different levels. I want to talk really very briefly. I could talk for a long time about what I see, about what you're doing. But I love the title of today's session, Challenges and Innovations. It's a perfect balance. It's the yin and yang of what we all live with in our personal and professional lives. I want to talk with you about what I see as some of our challenges from the non-library side. And I think these are really important challenges for us to hear and to hold and to visit with one another about a lot. In the work that I have done over the last 20, 30 years with cities and counties and primarily city managers 
county administrators, mayors, county executives, the councils and commissions, the elected officials that represent us to the citizens. I've always been impressed about what they think of libraries. <coughs> they like libraries. But here's our challenge. They really don't know what's going on in their libraries. <laughs> like me, a lot of them have gray hair. And that means the last time they may have been in the library was when they were in middle school or high school. And you and I know that libraries are a lot different than they were that long ago. But what happens is when decisions are made, and important decisions are made about resources, budgetary decisions, if our leaders in our communities, our elected officials, our top appointed officials, our business community leaders don't really know about the work we're doing in workforce development, in employment, in the really critical role that we play in education, and now learning to start to drive sustainability and uh, uh, thoughtfulness around energy and environment, if they don't know what we're doing, and they are locked in the idea that what's happening in the library is primarily around leisure reading, then we're being marginalized in their minds. And they see us as not essential. And we know in this room that the work that we do is critically essential. So one of our challenges, and I really want you to think about this, is how do we continuously get the word out on what we do? And in a language that our leaders will understand which means that we have to understand what their priorities are and then link what we're doing and how we describe what we're doing to the language that they use, their priorities. So that's one of our key challenges globally across all libraries that I've had contact with over the last three years. That's kind of a big challenge. An internal challenge that we all have is change. And how are we going to do our jobs differently today than we did them yesterday or five years ago? And I'm owning this as I say it to you. If I am doing the same things today 